Well, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Authentic Word. And I am Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford. God bless you. Thank you for watching the program. I'm so excited about what God has got for you today. Hey, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm telling you, our Jesus is so amazing. And this is the week that we're just really glorifying him and lifting him up to the world, to, to, to everyone we encounter because Jesus is so amazing and what he has done for us, how he was willing to give up being God, to come down to the earth, to put himself in the womb of a woman, and to be our savior, to get us back, because we were, you know, totally, um, when, when Adam and Eve ate off that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that put us in a very bad place. We lost our glory. We lost the Holy Spirit that dwelled in us. When, when the Lord breathed into Adam and Eve, that breath gave them life, supernatural, spiritual, eternal life. Hey, yeah, hallelujah, was living on the inside of them. But after the decision that they made, we lost that gift. We lost that beautiful spirit of Jesus that dwelled in us, the beautiful spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Hey, yeah, hallelujah. See, we were created from dust, from the ground, but God says, okay, I got to put my life in him because I've got to make man alive. I'm making man just like me in my image and in my likeness. So we had dominion and rulership. And so when Adam made a decision and there was two agreeing, you know, a powerful very, very powerful, that two in agreement. It's amazing what two can do, just two. Even one is powerful when you're anointed and you really are walking in faith and operating and living your life in faith as the Lord liked for us to do. That's why he gave us his spirit so that we can do that. But this is what's amazing to me. And we get born again and we receive the Holy Ghost and so forth and so on. But I think... And I know this is true for many of us even around the world, and that is that we still yet don't know who we really are. And so on today, I just want to really uh, get into the word concerning this. And so let me pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, to the Lord Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you today knowing your faithfulness, knowing your goodness, your mercy, your grace. You brought us this far. It's all you and none of us. You are the power that lives in us. You are the love, the joy that lives in us, the peace that only you can give. Your Holy Spirit has brought us this far. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to minister to the world your gospel, your truth, your, your purpose, your anointed assignment and destinies for our lives in the name of Jesus. And Jesus paid the price. He bought us. He gave up everything to become a man so that he could be our savior, not just to save us so that we would not go to hell eternal uh, hell, fire, and brimstone, but he saved us because he wanted us to be with him for all eternity. So we give it all back, everything that we lost in the garden through a decision. See, everything we do has to do with decisions we make. So God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus wants us to make the decision for him, to accept him, to receive him, to allow him to live through us on the earth because he had to go away. He had to be resurrected. He had, if he had not been resurrected, we could have never gotten saved. We would have never been able to get everything back, our rulership, our dominion. He said, have dominion over the earth and over the fowl of the air and all the, the dominion over the seas and all the 
creeping creatures, everything. Everything that's on this earth, the Lord, Hashem, he made it for us. He made it for us. He created it for our enjoyment, for our peace. Let, let's just read that real quickly, and then we're going to go to the major scripture. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Everything is connected to what happened in Genesis, the first, especially the first three chapters of Genesis. Wow. Everything that's going on on the earth right now, everything that has happened through these thousands of years, all started in Genesis. And so as the time has gone by, the Lord was saddened, but they already had a plan in place just in case man made a mistake that would cause them to not be with the Father and with the Word for all eternity. See, the Word, the Word of God, the Holy Bible, is the most awesome book that's ever been written because it's past, present, and future, all in one book. So you can never get lost. If you let this book be your instruction book, your guide, your inspiration, your help, your everything, hey, hallelujah, you can't miss. You will be so fulfilled, totally who you are supposed to be. So let's go to Genesis and let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that we have another opportunity for your word to be ministered into us. And we just thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your favor. That's in our lives, Lord. And so let this word really penetrate and go, go into our spirits and our hearts and, and, and all that we are in you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray this. Amen and amen. So now let's look at Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to go to verse 26. And of course, I'm sure many of you have read this thousands of times, but you know, the Word of God is so amazing and miraculous that no matter when you read it, and no matter how many times you read the same verse, the same chapter, the same scripture, there is more and more to get out of it. Because, see, God doesn't keep us at the level where we began. You know, he said, the end is better than the beginning. And that is so true. Because you're so much more mature. You're walking by faith and not by sight. You're understanding what all of that means. You're growing in Jesus. You're growing in the Holy Spirit. You're being elevated and matured every time you you meditate and read the word of God every time you, you make a decision to pray and commune with your Father and commune with Jesus Christ, our Savior. Yeah, hallelujah. And so the price he paid yeah, is called the Passover week because this whole week is a week that we honor him, lift him up, glorify him because of what he's done for us. Hallelujah. Not only that, but the way he expressed his love in total totality, no limits, no limits. He gave up everything to save us, to deliver us, for us to come back to our rightful place of position and power and authority and healing and, and health, divine health. So let, And so in verse 26, he said, and God said, now uh, God, and uh, uh, we are all speaking spirits now. We're speaking spirits because if, we, if you got born again, you're a speaking spirit. You are now a spirit being, not just a human being, but a spirit being. And so you do things the way God do them. You have to learn how to do that. That's why he said, I gave you my spirit and I wanted you to have it because it takes power. And so the Holy Spirit is your power that power that lives in you. You have power to do the things that Jesus did. And that's why he says that in his word. You can go to John chapter 1 and verses 10 through 12, and he'll tell you, he said, everyone that accepts me, everyone that receives me, I'm going to give them this power. Hey, yeah, hallelujah. We have the power of the Son of God living inside of us. And so he says, 
let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, making man in our image, we, of course, we know we're physically in his image, but that meant spiritually on the inside in character and how we do things and how we talk, the way we live, all of that meant the likeness of them. Not just your outward appearance. You are a spirit being now. And so, he said, let, let us make them like us. So we're like them. So you make it with your mouth. So what you say is what's going to happen. What you say is what you shall receive. What you say is how the outcome is going to be. And so he says here, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creep upon the earth. Don't you know every creature that God created and made, they were originally, they were not fighting, they were not eating each other, there was no violence, none of that. All of that came about as a result of the sin. See, when we leave the presence of God, we are right where we're going to be. We're going to be in sin. And what does sin do? Sin leads to death. It leads to eternal damnation. That's what sin does. And so when Adam made the decision to eat off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he made a choice, and that choice led to sin, and that sin leads to death. And so he says here, and look at verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. See, there it is, male and female. Eliwoho created he them. So we're all made. Every human being that's ever existed, that ever been born through the womb of a woman, that made it all the way through. Hallelujah. And, and even those that were uh, maybe been aborted or been, those are back in heaven. See, anything God creates, it never dies. It lives for all eternity. So those children, women and families who've had abortions, God is merciful. He's gracious. He has forgiven you. That life is back in heaven. And so he washes away. When we accept him and receive what he's done for us, and he went to Calvary and he paid the price three days and three nights and was resurrected because if he had not been resurrected, we could have never been here today to be saved, to get born again, to ever experience eternal life, which is what we had, hallelujah, in the beginning. And so he said then, look at verse 28, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth, subdue it. See, take authority, take control over it, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth, everything that moves and live. And so that's, that's, that's our beginning. That's our beginning. We had all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, all love and joy. We was filled full with it. That's why there was such glory on us. That's why we were clothed with the glory. And so Adam uh, uh, realized that they were clothed with glory. <laughs> but they didn't find that out until they sinned because all that glory left them. Now they realized they were naked. Don't you know when you don't know Jesus and you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you, you, you are naked. You are dead. You, you are naked. And you can't come alive without Jesus, without repenting, without accepting him and receiving what he has done for all of humanity, everybody. He said, whoever wants to receive him and accept him. Okay, so now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and let's look at verse 16 and 17. And this is what God says. He says, Wow, don't you know yet who you really are? Wow, oh, don't you know who you are yet? Many of us still have to find out who we really are. Wow, our true identity, our true identity is in Jesus Christ, which is also in the Father, because you can't have Jesus 
you, you can't have Jesus, you know, without the Father, and you can't have the Father without Jesus. You have to have Jesus in order to be able to get to the Father, for you to be accepted by the Father. The Father says, I accept anyone who repents and, and comes to my Son, and it's through my Son, my only begotten Son, that I will receive you, because he shed his blood and his body, and he paid the price. All right, let's look at verse 16. He said, know you not that you are the temple of God. <laughs> he said, you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. That means the spirit of God is living on the inside of you. He says, I'm in you and you're in me. And you ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. He said, you abide in me, stay in him, allow his spirit to stay in you and be active. Hey, yeah, hallelujah, praise God. He said, abide in me, and I abide in you, and you can ask me anything, and it shall be done. See, Jesus don't have any limits of what he will do for you. He said, I am the God of the impossible. All things are possible with me. So he said, don't you know, haven't you found this out yet, that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And if any man defile the temple of God, now listen to this, this is extremely important. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. God's going to destroy that person himself. When you defile his temple, when you have once been his temple, and you defile your, this body that he has allowed you to live in, because see, this body is physical flesh. This body is, is not immortal. This body is mortal. It will, this physical body dies, but, but not your spirit, not who you are as a person. That will never die. That will be for all eternity. So he said, because the spirit of God dwells in you, you will live forever. You will live in a glorious place. You will live in the heavens and so with him for all eternity. And he said, and he said, for the temple of God is holy. So this body that you live in, it's holy. Don't be fooled by what people say. Oh, you're not holy. No, I am holy. The real me on the inside of what you see on the outside, our physical bodies, that's the outside. The real you, you're going to see when this physical body die, your, your, your spiritual body, you'll instantly be in your totally spiritual body because you're already a spirit. <laughs> so when you put on your spiritual suit, your spiritual clothing, which is going to be the glory of God, <laughs> when God comes and gets to all of us that are still alive, and those who've already descended, they're already in their glorious new body. So when your loved ones d make a decision, and many times it's a decision that we make when we pass away. So we don't really go away. We just go into our new spiritual bodies. We're instantly, he said, it's going to be quicker than the blinking of the eye. How quickly you'll be in your new body. Hey, yeah, glory to God. And he said, so your, your, your temple of God is holy even right now. Which temple you are. You are the temple of God. And look at verse 18. And let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, the person that we may consider as a wise person in this world that we live in. He said, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Why does he say that? You're becoming a fool that you can be wise? Because, see, you're not wise unless you have the spirit of wisdom living in you, which is Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of love, which is the spirit of, of faith, which is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. So that's the real you. So you are really wise, and you get even more wise the more you study the Word of God, the more you communicate and fellowship with the Lord, 
But not only that, he said, you could ask him for wisdom and he'll give it to you. But the, he said, the wisdom of this world, though, that's foolishness to him. That's foolishness to him. And so he said, look at verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Wow. So he said, that's foolishness to him. That, that's, that, that's nothing. But let, let's continue. Let's read to the end of uh, this chapter. Chapter 3, 1 Corinthians. And we're in verse 20 now. He said, and again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise. He knows the thoughts of us down here on earth that are wise. But he said he didn't call many wise anyway. <laughs> he, he called the foolish things of the world to do what? To confound the wise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at God. He is so amazing the way he does things. Wow. I tell you, he blows our minds. And so he said, so the Lord know the thoughts of the wise, that they are what? They are vain. See, they're vain. They're like a puff of air. It's like nothing. It's like a puff of air, like nothing. Now think about it sometimes. The thoughts that we have, the ideas we have, you know, and we haven't asked for God's wisdom. We need God's wisdom. And so God said, you know, because your own wisdom that you came up with from studying and going to college and high school and graduating and professional career, you know, studying and all of that. Okay, that's good. That's well, that's fine. And all of that's wonderful. And all the gifts and talents he's given us, you know, to do different things. And some of us are just born with certain gifts to play music or to sing or whatever gifts we have to be artistic. We're creators. We know how to design things, put things together. You know, man is very creative. And he creates things with his mouth. You have to have the thought. And so what comes out of your mouth was whatever you were thinking. And so those issues are in our heart. And they come from our heart. And then once they are expressed out of our heart, they come out of our mouths. So what we say is, that's why what we say is what we're going to have. Because whatever you spend time with, whatever you are thinking on, those are the things that's going to manifest. Ooh, glory to God in your life. So when you manifest on Jesus, when you, you meditate on him and you, and you uh, allow Jesus to manifest through you, wow, you're going to do things that you never dreamed or thought you could ever, ever do. Hallelujah. So look at verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men. Why? Because what men think and do is foolishness to God. So we don't glory in ourselves because we are the temple of God, because the Holy Spirit lives in us, and that makes us very special. And anyone who wants to be special, just get born again if you are not. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he said, don't glory in that, you know, of who you are in him. He said, no, for all things are yours. See, therefore, let no man glory in men. Don't glory in yourself. Don't glory in men. Glory in God. Do everything to the glory of God, to the glory of Jesus Christ, to the Father in heaven. Everything for that purpose. To he's where he will say to you, well, please, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Even though we're his children, but we are his servants too because we live to serve him. And that's the most glorious life when you live to serve Jesus. When you live to serve Father God and you can do all things through him. He said, you can. He said, because I am your strength. I'm your help. I am the one that makes it all happen for you. Hallelujah. So he said, for all things are yours. See, because everything already belonged to you. So you don't brag about that, even though you give testimony about it. That's going to help someone else to come to that place of wanting to accept Jesus and accept all that he's done for them. He paid the price. We're bought with that price. 
And so whether Paul or whether Apollos or whether Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. They're all yours anyway. You don't have to fight for them. You ain't got to pay the price. You don't have to do all of that. Jesus already did all of that for you. That's why we glorify him. That's why we have Passover, Resurrection, Sunday, Easter Sunday. Some people call it Easter, but it really has nothing to do with Easter. <laughs> it has to do with our glorious Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King, our God, <laughs> being resurrected, raised from the dead, went back to heaven so that we could be able to be with him for all eternity and to get everything back that we had lost. So it's all yours, and you are crisis, and crisis is God's, and Christ, the anointed one, our strength and our help. One more, one more scripture I want us to look at concerning this identity thing, you know, for you to really understand your identity. And that's such a powerful topic because without that, you really don't even understand and know what you need to be doing or how to do it if you don't understand who you really are. Because see, in the Garden of Eden, during that time with Adam and Eve, they lost their identity. The minute you, they had the wrong thought, the thought of eating off that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they lost their identity. So when you make decisions that will bring grief, hardship, headache, pain, suffering. You know, sometimes we do that because we're trying to mask our pain, our hurt, our disappointment, uh, the misery of our lives. No matter where we are, no matter where we came from, no matter who we are, there are things that are going to happen in life that's not always going to be right because of what happened. And so the results of our life, people say, oh, well, this person was saved, been saved for 40 years, and born again, and I don't know why God allowed that to happen. You know, God didn't have anything to do with it. That's what you have to understand. God had nothing to do with that tragedy. God had nothing to do with that hopeless situation. God had nothing to do with you were addicted to whatever, or family members, or tragedy things happen because they do. So why? Because all of that was released through human beings when Adam and Eve sinned. When Adam and Eve made a decision to relinquish being in the presence of God. So when we're not in the presence of God, when we're not born again, when, when we do not have the Holy Spirit residing in us, anything can happen. He doesn't have to cover us, but he does because he's so merciful and loving because he covers you. If you're not born again, he covers you so you can get to that point where you will accept him and receive him. And he said he'll give you the power to become sons of God. And that power is the Holy Spirit. That power that he puts in you once you confess him and, and, and receive him and accept him. So this is what he says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And he said, look at verse 19. What? He says, what? This is Apostle Paul talking to the Corinthians. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, whichever. Which is in you. It lives in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. You do not belong to yourself anymore. So you really don't have the right to make a decision that you know that would not please him. If you are in a true, genuine relationship with Jesus, you will think about it. You will pray, and you will say, Lord, forgive me. I changed my mind. That's what repent means. It means to change your mind and to go back to him, to do it his way. He said, so, look at verse 20. For you are bought with the price. There it is. And that's what the Resurrection Week is all about. 
because he was raised. He paid the price. He, he bled seven different places in his body. He shed all of his blood for you, his everything. He went through all that torture and torment and all that excruciating pain. That was the price he paid because he loved you so much he wanted you back. He wanted you back into this glorious life that he died to pay to give us. And so he said, I bought you. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So your body is not your own. And in your spirit, which are God's. And that's just the beginning of finding out about your true identity. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I am so excited that now you're getting a clearer and a much better understanding of who you are in Jesus, who you are in Father God and the Holy Spirit. And uh, if we could just take a real quick look, and then I want to announce something to you. Uh, praise the Lord. And it's going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 also, starting in verse 14. And he said, look, be you not unequally yoked, together with unbelievers. You know, you can go to unbelievers and ask them do they know Jesus or if they're willing to talk to you. He said, only do it if they're willing. If they're not willing, don't try to force them. Don't try to make them. Leave them alone. God is the one that's going to change their heart and cause them to come back to him, cause them to repent and say, Lord, I changed my mind. I, I want to receive you. I want you to wash and cleanse me from my my sins, my wrongdoings, iniquities, all of my life I've done this, and I want you to come live on the inside of me. And he's faithful. He will do it. And so I just thank you for joining us once again in OCN Network. This is the Authentic Word, and I am Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.